what it is game dev gangster now we are going to finally move our character and there are multiple ways how we can do that because in programming and software development engineering whatever there are always multiple ways how to solve things and there is no oh this is the best way of course in terms of performance there are good and bad ways that is totally fine but you know People ask me often, why did you use this and did not use that? Well, because there are multiple ways how to do things. And one of the ways is going over here and right clicking and creating a blueprint class and creating here a player controller. So I'm going to click here and create a player control. I'm going to say here BP game character. So game character underscore controller. There you go. And of course, we need to double click this bad boy, open it over here. And now since we are in the blueprint editor for it, I'm going to go into the event graph. So what's going to happen over here? Well, first things first here from the event begin play, which is you see, event when play begins for this actor, basically, if you have followed any of my Unity tutorials, you can think of the begin play like start or awake. So over here, this is going to be the initialization point. I am going to cast to BP game character. And casting basically means I'm going to convert something into something. So I'm going to cast and who am I casting? I'm casting here get player character. And this is the main player character. So I'm going to attach them over here. How do I know that this get play or player character will return our player character? Well, because over here, if you remember in the game mode, we set our Unreal Engine platform or game mode to be the default game mode. And from there, we selected the BP game character to be the default pawn class. So basically, when we call this over here, it is going to get that pawn class. But still, it's only a, you see, it returns a player character. It doesn't know that it's actually our BP game character. So this casting will convert this, which is a general player character. It will convert it into our BP game character. And then from here, you see, I can drag this node and I can say here, promote to variable and it is going to promote it as BP game character. I can call it here game character reference. So this means we have a reference to the game character. So now that we have a reference to our game character, we can basically move him forward. And how can we move him forward? Well, from here, I can filter for move forward. And look at this here, axis events move forward. Look at this here, input axis move forward. What is this? Well, basically, going back over here and inside of the input, this is that. So this is that move forward, you see? So this is how we can call that input axis that we have created, same way we can call the action mappings. So now this input axis here will be executed whenever we press one of the following buttons. That is W, S, up or down. So going back over here, what we are going to do, I'm going to say add movement or actually we need to do that from our players. So game character here. And from here, I'm going to say add movement input. If you like this tutorial series and you would like to learn more about game development, you can do that in my Game Development Academy where I have more comprehensive tutorials, more detailed tutorials, where I teach you more advanced stuff than in this tutorial. Link is down below for a small monthly fee. You can support this cause and you can learn something. Click the link down below and check it out. And the movement input is basically how we are going to move our player. And who is the target over here? So as you can see, the target is, you know, the pawn that we want to move, or in this case, the game character. So he is the target. But how are we going to move him? Well, we are going to move him by providing this axis value over here that we are going to put here in the scale value. But still, we need to also provide the world direction, basically meaning where we are going to go. And for that, from our game character, we are going to get the control rotation. And now that we have our control rotation from it, we can get the forward vector because this is move forward. So from here, we're going to say get forward vector. And this is going to, you know, give us the direction forward for the current rotation of our character. And we're simply going to plug that into the world direction. If I were to go back over here and hit the play button, and if I press the W key or the S key or the up arrow or the left or actually down arrow, nothing is going to happen. But teacher, you said this is going to move him. Don't cry, okay? Do not cry. This is a tutorial. Don't cry. In order for our game controller to be 
acknowledged by our, by our game. Same as what we did here for our BP game character. We need to tell the default game mode who is the player controller. So it's not the default one, but it's actually the BP game character controller. So this is now the default game controller. And if I go over here and hit the play button now, look at that. W and he moves forward. S and he moves backwards. And if I, you know, press forward, he moves forward. This is the, you know, back or down arrow key. And this is the forward or up arrow key. Look at that. So you see now how we are moving the character. And this is what I was talking about over here inside of our input. You see, I set the w to have the scale of one s has a scale of minus one up has one and down has minus one because we are moving forward and backwards so back is the negative forward is the positive so this is one of the ways how we can move our game character i'm not going to do it this way i'm just showing you that there are multiple ways how we can do it so i'm going to go here into maps and modes and remove our default or put the player controller class to the default player controller, and we're going to move the player from himself. So from here, from the game character, we're going to move our game character. So over here, I'm going to delete everything because we do not need it. Instead, over here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to filter for our input action jump. And look at that. So we have the jump, which is this one over here inside of our input. You see this one over here. So that is the name. And if we press the space bar, it will be executed. But what do we want it to, what do we want to execute when we press the space bar? Look at here, when it's pressed, I simply want to call the jump function that is built into the game character. So this is a built in function in the game character. If I go back over here and hit the play button, I'm pressing, you see, I'm pressing the space bar and look at that. Look at that. Now, of course, over here, you can click and add more inputs. So that is up to you to test it out. I'm just showing you multiple ways how we can do things. So next, I am going to change the rotation of our character. And in order for me to do that, I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to filter for the rotation Y. So here is my rotation Y. And next, I'm going to right click and filter for the rotation X. Here it is. So what's going to happen when I, you know, use the rotation Y? Well, from here, I am going to say add controller pitch input. There you go. And from here, I'm going to place the axis value over here. And over here for our X, I'm simply going to say add controller yaw input. Look at that. And from here, I'm going to place the axis value over here. What is pitch and what is yaw? Well, basically, this is how in Unreal Engine axes are called. So if I click on my game character, is it over here? Let me just see. It's inside of the is it in the mesh? There you go. Finally, I found it. It's in the mesh. You see here in the rotation, if I hover over, X is called roll. Y is called pitch. And Z is called yaw. So this is how axes are called. X, Y, and Z. Basically, X is roll. Y is pitch. And Z is yaw. So if I go over here in the gameplay and hit the play button. So now, look at that. I am moving or moving the mouse left and right and the player is rotating. But if I move the mouse up and down, which I'm currently doing, nothing is happening. Again, teacher, you lied to me. I'm disappointed in you, teacher. I'm going to... Look, stop it. Stop it. Do not cry, okay? I'm going to show you now what is the issue. So if I move again the mouse up and down, nothing is happening. In order for us to fix this, we need to go over here and click on this BP game character self, this one here at the top, you see the now yellow one. And from there inside of the pawn over here on the details tab, we need to click this use controller rotation pitch. So when you check that checkbox and compile and save that change. So when you check that checkbox, now we will be able to use the mouse to control the pitch input. So if I go back and hit the play button, if I move up, there you go, we're looking up. If I move down, we look down. So you see, there is no reason for you to cry if, you know, I don't show you something right away in the tutorial. Patience, pupil, patience. You're learning from the master. So patience. 
anyways, now we can, you know, left and right, we can look left and right, we can jump and we can look up and down. Going back to what I said over here, why do I set here the scale for the mouse Y to be minus one? Well, if I set it to one and go back over here and hit the play button, look what is going to happen. If I move the mouse button up, he is looking down. If I move the mouse button down, he is looking up and this is if you're testing along with me this is what you see and this is basically the inverse that you see in video games this is mostly in fps in shooter games you use in in the options you can click the checkbox to use the inverse or something like that it is called i, I cannot remember but basically that means when you you know move your mouse up the character looks down. If you move the mouse down, the character looks up. So that is the reason why we need to set over here minus if you don't want it that way. So if you want your mouse to basically, if, or your character, when you move the mouse up, you want to look up, then you need to set minus one. If you, you know, move the mouse down and you want to look down, you get the point. That is the reason why. Now we are back to the movement. So over here we are going to do our movement. I'm going to right click and we are going to get our move forward, which is this bad boy over here and right click and we are going to get move right, which is this bad boy over here. So when we press and these are the input axes, by the way, which we, you know, defined over here, move forward, move right, and you can see, you know, the inputs that we can receive for them. So what's going to happen when we click here to move forward? Well, again, we're going to say add movement input. And in order for this movement input to work, we need to put or plug in the axis value and we need to plug in the direction. So the direction, we are going to get the controller or control rotation. And from the control rotation, get forward vector because we need to know the forward destination of the current rotation. And basically, what is that forward? Well, that forward is, you see over here, if I select the player start, it's basically this, this is the forward, you see, going forward, there you go. So based on our current rotation, it is going to tell us where we are moving forward. If I hover over, rotate the world vector by the given rotation, you see, that's the forward one. And I'm going to copy this, you know, movement input and I'm going to place it over here and plug this in over here. This also goes over here. And for the direction, we still need to get the control rotation. But this time for the control rotation, we need to get the right vector because we are moving to the left or to the right side. So if I compile and save this and now if I go into the gameplay and hit the play button, look at that, a fully functional character with a few lines of blueprint code. So now we can, you know, maneuver these labyrinths over here that we have. We can jump as well. So there you go. Look at that. Jumpy, jumpy, jumpy. Like our player is a bunny, bunny, bunny. There you go. I'm also singing to you and, and you get the point. So voila. This is it. This is the movement for our character and click on the player start to move over here. So move in the focus. By the way, over here, if I didn't say and probably I did not say that so far in this videos in order to, you know, maneuver this all of you can hold the right mouse button and then with WASD key move. And while you're doing that, you can scroll the mouse wheel down to slow down the movement or scroll the mouse wheel up to, you know, pump up to you know make the movement faster and so on and so forth you see you get the point look at that and again i'm going to move it down and voila there you go so this was it when it comes to the movement it's pretty simple it's not that hard at all we simply in order to rotate add the control pitch jump function it's already built in over here add movement input which is going to move the character in this direction by this given value so if it's a positive value it will move forward if it's a negative value it will move backwards now of course this value can be a higher or a lower speed or basically what we can do is over here in the game character and we can select him from the viewport bp game character so we can select the game character and actually it's over here in the character movement and over here you have different settings so you have the character movement this is the scale here is the character movement walking so over here you have the maximum walk speed you can play with these values i'm not going to do that so this is the walk speed so the higher this value is let's say for example if i you know add it or set it to a thousand so the higher the value is the faster the player is going to move as you can notice he 
is moving a little bit faster. I don't know if you can notice that, but definitely, you know, you can notice if you're testing. I don't know if you can notice from the video. If you put it at 600, you know, it's going to, you know, be the default movement, you see? It's not moving that fast. So depending on what you want to do. So that can be up to you. You can also, you can also set the character movement or set that value. For, for example, create a variable and then set the value from the inspector. We will see that, how that goes, setting values from the inspector, if you don't know that. Anyways, I wanna cut th this video out. I don't want to bore you anymore. This is all the wisdom I have to share. If something is not clear over here, make sure that you ask. The last step that I'm going to do is put all of this into comments so I can, you know, select all the notes that I want and I can right click and go here at the bottom and click here, create comment from selection and I can, you know, call this one character jump and, you know, simple as that. Simple as that. I can select these and right click and over here I can say character rotation and last but not least I can select these over here and I can right click and I can say character movement there you go and I can simply compile and save that now of course then you can move all of these with the comment and comments are used to you know group blocks of code or to for you to know what they are when you later on come back to your game and yada 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 you get the point so again if something is not clear for all of this here make sure you ask in the comment down below and I will help you out and I will see you in the next video